In the last video, we saw this theorem that if you have a two by two matrix, you can write down a so-called inverse for it. In this video, we're gonna figure out how you would find the inverse of a bigger square matrix, maybe three by three, maybe four by four or bigger. And it's not gonna be a neat formula like this. It's gonna be an algorithm, something you have to do to your matrix to turn it into its inverse. So here is the theorem. Um, given an n by n matrix A, form the augmented matrix And this is going to be bigger than the augmented matrices we've seen so far. So in, in the past, augmented matrix has just been stick an extra column into your matrix. But now the augmented matrix, uh, which I'm not going to distinguish notationally from the other one, is going to be A on the left-hand side of the bar, and then a vertical bar, and then the identity matrix on the right-hand side of the bar. Um, I'll, I'll do an example shortly um, but let me finish the statement of the theorem so use row operations to put so you apply the row operations to the whole thing the whole augmented matrix but you're just putting the uh, left hand side into um, echelon, reduced echelon form. So the conclusion of the theorem is if the result, uh, I should give a name for the result. Okay, so you, you're, you're going to end up with um, something of the form B, C for some matrices B and C. So if B equals the identity matrix, then A is invertible with inverse C. If B is not the identity matrix, then A is not invertible. Okay, so the idea is you start with the matrix A identity, you do a bunch of row operations, you try to turn A into the identity, and as you do that, you're doing some row operations over here which turn the identity into A inverse. It's kind of uh, nice symmetry to the, to the situation. So in other words, you if A is invertible, then you start with A i, and you end up with I A inverse. Okay, we're not going to prove this theorem immediately. We're going to do a load of examples first um, to compute the inverses, and then we're going to develop some theory to prove this. So let's start by revisiting the example we had earlier on, which was here. So this corresponds to the simultaneous system of simultaneous equations x minus y equals minus 1 x plus y equals 3. Ignore the equals blah blah blah. We just want to invert this matrix A. So the matrix A is this this 2 by 2 block here. We've actually computed its inverse already. It's supposed to be a half 1 1 minus 1 1. So let's check. All right, this is A. So let's apply this theorem. Let's write A and then a vertical bar and then the identity matrix, which is now going to be a two by two identity matrix. Right, that's what I mean here with this piece of notation. If this was a three by three matrix, we'd have to stick the three by three identity matrix here. We'll do another example like that soon. Now we want to do row operations to this matrix. I'm going to need a new page. 
So let's start doing row operations to put it into reduced echelon form. So what do we do first? We want to subtract row 1 from row 2 to get rid of this guy. So this is row 2 goes to row 2 minus row 1. And that's going to leave one row 1 unchanged. And row 2 is going to go to 0, 2, minus 1, 1. Okay? We've subtracted minus 1 from 1. We've subtracted 1 from 0. That's where these numbers have come from. And now, okay, let's divide this last row by 2. It's going to become 1 minus 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, minus a half, a half. And finally, we just need to get rid of this guy to put it into reduced echelon form. It's already in echelon form, it just need to be in reduced echelon form, so we need to clear this column. So we're going to add row 2 to row 1. And that's going to give us one, zero, a half, a half, zero, one, minus a half, a half. And now we're done because this block over here is in reduced echelon form. And better still, it's the identity matrix. Because it's the identity matrix, if we look at our theorem. That tells us A is invertible, and the inverse is whatever's on the right-hand side of the bar. In other words, this is the inverse. Oops. And let's just check what did we say the inverse was earlier on. Moment of truth. We said it was a half, 1, 1, minus 1, 1. And that's the same, right? If you multiply a half into this, you rescale all the entries by a half, so you get a half, a half, minus a half, a half. Tick. Okay, let's do another example. And um, I don't know, I don't want you to get the impression that this is always easy, and I don't want to pick examples that are, like, too easy. So, um, Let's take 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 1, 5, 0, and let's try and invert it. I claim this is invertible, so we're aiming to get the identity matrix on the left-hand side of the bar. Let's augment it with the 3 by 3 identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And let's start applying operations. So first, what's the problem? We're not in echelon form because of this one below the diagonal. So we need to do row 3 goes to row 3 minus row 1. So oops. we're going to subtract 1. That's going to go to 0. This is going to go to 3 and this is going to go to minus 3. because 5 minus 2 and 0 minus 3 gives us this. And don't forget we've got to do the same operations of over on this side of the matrix, on this side of the bar. This is going to be minus 1. Okay, next um, we've got this problematic 3 stopping us from being in echelon form, so let's subtract 3 lots of row 2 from row 3. Now, rather than watching this, you could be just doing this and then fast forwarding to check you got the right answer. But just saying. Um, so that's going to go to a zero. I'll do it in red. It's going to become zero. 
Uh, this minus 3 is getting 3 lots of 4 taken away from it. 3 lots of 4 is 12, so we get minus 15 here. Um, we're also subtracting 3 lots of 1 on this side. So never forget to do the operations on this side too, because I do forget sometimes, and uh, it's a pain. As soon as you make one mistake early on, it propagates through the entire calculation, and it's a pain. Okay, are we in echelon form? We're in echelon form, but we're not in reduced echelon form. For example, this entry is not a 1, but it needs to be a 1. So we're going to divide by minus 15 on row 3. So this is going to become a 1. This minus 1 is going to become a 1 over 15. And this minus 3 is going to become a 1 over 5. Also this is going to become a minus 1 over 15. Okay, are we in echelon form? Sorry, reduced echelon form. Not yet. We need to get rid of these three numbers here and to clear the columns containing the leading entries. So these two columns. So let's press on. I told you I didn't want this one to be too easy so it's going to get a bit messy now. Um, so we're going to do row 2 minus 4 row 3. Right, so row 2 is going to be replaced by row 2 minus 4 row 3 to get rid of this 4. Um, so if I subtract 4 lots of 1 over 15, this is going to give me uh, minus 4 over 15. If I subtract 4 lots of 1 over 5 from 1, that's going to give me uh, 1 over 5. And if I subtract 4 lots of minus 1 over 15 from 0, that's going to give me 4 over 15. I also want to get rid of this 3, so I'm going to do row 1 goes to row 1 minus 3 lots of row 3. Okay, 3 lots of 1 over 15 is 1 over 5. 1 minus 1 over 5 is 4 over 5. Uh, 0 minus 3 over 5, that's just minus 3 over 5. And this was a 0, and we're subtracting 3 lots of minus 1 over 15. That's adding on 3 lots of 1 over 15, so adding on 1 over 5. I hope I haven't made a mistake. I haven't actually checked this yet. Um, anyway, so that has got rid of this 4, and it's got rid of this 3. So they become zeros. And I'm going to move down to the next row now next uh, space down here. We need to get rid of this 2. So I need to subtract off from row 1 2 lots of row 2. Well, yeah, it's getting a bit messy now. So we've got uh, 4 fifths minus minus 8 fifteenths. 4 fifths plus 8 fifteenths. There's a 1 over 5 outside, and then it's 4 plus 8 over 3. Now let's take a factor of 4 out as well. Uh, uh, uh. 1 plus 2 thirds, so this is 4 over 5, and inside it's 5 over 3, so that's 4 over 3 in total. Um, let's move that. 
have to weigh some more. Um, here, minus three fifths minus two over five. Uh, that's just minus one. And one fifth minus eight over fifteen. That's one over five times one minus eight over three. That's one over five times minus five over three. That's minus a third. And now we finally got rid of this two. So this is a zero. So on the left hand side of the bar we have the identity matrix on the right hand side of the bar we've got a mess that bears no resemblance whatsoever to the matrix we started with which is this relatively benign looking matrix up here so it just goes to show you you're not necessarily going to get a nice answer no matter how nice the numbers you start with finish I just want to check that I've really got the right answer because there's somehow no guarantee um, so here is what I'm claiming the inverse is here is what the matrix was to begin with If I multiply them together, I should get the identity matrix. All right, that's what it means to be the inverse. So let's check. One times four thirds minus two times four over fifteen. This is four thirds minus eight over fifteen, and then three times one over five. Now, I have here. A calculator so just for sound effects I'm gonna use it so 4 over 3 minus 8 over 15 plus 3 over 15 is 1 look at that it's, it's equal to 1 that's what it's supposed to be uh, so that's one entry and now there's nine more entries to check so uh, I'll just pause the video while you check and look at that you get the identity matrix okay so this is indeed a inverse if this is a and there's nothing to stop you doing four by four five by five uh, you know I could easily ask that on the exam um, so there's a bunch of exercises where you can do lots of examples like this I'm not going to do any more of the videos um, because it's kind of tedious for you to watch um, so in the next video we are going to develop a bit of theory and then come back and prove this theorem that this actually works because at the moment this is just a piece of magic right that happens to give you the right answer but there's a reason as always